Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So in this video, we're gonna be doing a deep dive into Hercules. But before we get started, I wanted to give you a little bit of a background. So before Hercules came into the contest, we were given his data sheet, okay? And a lot of YouTubers made videos on Hercules with the data sheet. He was not in the contest. No one had played with him as of yet. So there was a lot of theory crafting. Now on paper, Hercules looked good, but you have some who saw his potential. And so they were talking about his potential and a lot of us, myself included, thought they were overhyping the champion. We felt that he was good, he looked good, but we were a little wary of that hype train, okay? It's just our personality. Um, I prefer to wait and see. So as I was having some conversations and people were theory crafting and you know, we had some people saying he had no utility whatsoever, um, but again, he had not come into the contest yet. So I tried to get them to just kind of wait and see you know, and then Hercules entered the contest and in my opinion, lives up to the hype and we're going to see why. All right. So first let's take a look at his attributes. All right. Nothing too crazy here. Look at his health, pretty decent health there. And uh, let's see over here. So he's got critical rating. 10% is pretty low, but as you will see, he has ways to increase his crit rating by quite a bit. Uh, his critical damage rating, it's quite a bit, but it gets more. You can actually increase it. Uh, armor penetration, he has 0%, but again, he has an ability where he will gain more armor penetration. Uh, block penetration, 5.3. Critical resistance, he has none. Uh, armor rating, 23.4 is okay. And his block proficiency, 69.5. That is really good. Uh, anything that is close to 70, in my opinion, is really good. All right. So he's looking okay. All right. Now, let's take a look at his synergies. Now, what I do is I always like to see who they have a synergy with, whether this is a person that I'm likely to bring on my team you know, plays a part into how good it is because the synergy could be phenomenal. But if you have to bring a champion that you're not going to use, that's not good, for me, it lowers the value a little bit. It doesn't mean that I won't bring that champion in, but it lowers it. So first up, we already have a synergy and it's with himself. And look at what it is. Okay, this applies to hero champions. While Hercules is alive, he gains 10% attack while under the influence or the effects of poison from the Liquid Courage Mastery. So Hercules is suicide friendly. In fact, they have it right there in his synergy that he will benefit from being under Liquid Courage, which is one of the suicide masteries. Once I saw that, I was already excited about Hercules, okay? Because I run suicides all the time. So here we go. Now this next one is with Black Panther. He just got a rework. Not too enthused about this. Uh, on activation of a special attack, one or two, gain an unblockable buff for three seconds. That's cute, but it's not enough for me to bring Bla uh, Black Panther with me. All right, here's another one here. And it's with uh, the Thors, OG Thor and Thor Jane Foster. Now, I like OG Thor, so I wouldn't mind bringing him along with me. Hope he gets a, a buff after that severe nerf he got. But anyway, uh, while you're at or below 5% health, your well-timed blocks gain 100% perfect block chance. So that adds a little bit to survivability. But with Hercules, as you'll see, he's got enough survivability. 
All right, here we got Hawkeye, who is underrated. He's actually a really good champion, even though, you know, I don't tend to use him all that much because I have better options, but he's not a bad champion by any means. Uh, the Infuriate cooldown is reduced by 40%. We'll talk more about that Infuriate when we go over his abilities. All right, now this one here, I am a Hulk fan, okay? I hate seeing my OG Hulk in the condition he's in, but we're not going to go there. Anyway, he's got a synergy with the Hulks, okay? We've got uh, OG Hulk, we've got Immortal Hulk, we've got um, Hulk Ragnarok. And they're not terrible. Of course, OG Hulk is the worst of the bunch. Immortal Hulk, I've seen some great gameplay with him, so I could really see myself bringing him. And Thor Ragnarok, I mean, not Thor Ragnarok, Hulk Ragnarok, um, he... As long as he can activate face me, he's one of the best champions in the game. But he has to be able to trigger his face me. Okay? So I could see myself bringing one or two of these guys along. And Hercules starts the fight with plus three strength, which we will see what that does and just why that's so good uh, a little bit later here. All right? And then here we've got um one of my favorite which is captain america infinity war this is my favorite synergy because i can really see myself bringing this guy along in fact we were doing the side quest and i was bringing him along for extra points so i was getting this armor break because that's what this synergy does uh every time you complete a feat of strength it inflicts an armor break removing one armor up buff and reducing armor rating okay so i love that because it means he's going to hit even harder all right so that's definitely a plus now that one the hulk definitely good ones and of course the one he has with himself all right now let's see here the last two he gains armor rating and he gains power gain uh, with uh, Wolverine. So, of course, Ant-Man, no. Falcon is good. So I could see myself bringing Falcon. Black Widow, probably not. And Wasp, I'm always bringing Wasp with my uh, standard um, questing team. So I usually have Ghost, Hood, Wasp. Hercules is now part of my questing team. And so the fifth position can go to uh, Captain America Infinity War, or it could go to one of the Hulks. Now, I, I currently have Captain America Infinity War uh, ranked up. Sig 200, five-star rank five. So he's likely to get that spot. All right, um, because these, they're nice, but, you know, more armor rating, it's not enough to dedicate a spot. But since I already bring Wasp, it's just gravy, extra gravy. All right, let's get into his abilities. So first off, his signature ability. I know everyone wants to know, does he need to be awakened? Yes and no. So in order for him to be insane, he needs to be awakened. His awakened ability gains so much that without it, he is less than half of what he could be. Okay, that's just my opinion. Um, without the signature ability, yes. You can play him. He's going to be doing great damage, all that good stuff. Uh, in a lot of questing that I've done with him, I uh, his signature ability didn't even come into play. Okay, so he is definitely playable and, and a great champion without the signature ability. However, that signature ability is crazy compared to Corvus. Corvus, without his signature ability, he can still do all that crazy damage. But with that signature ability, he's worth a generic. So is Hercules, worth a generic. If you have a generic, use it on him. All right, so once per fight, when receiving damage that will result in a knockout, gain an immortality buff. Now, it's a buff, which means it can be um, staggered or nullified or prevented. So just keep that in mind. Unlike Corvus, 
Um, his can be nullified, prevented, all that good stuff. It also makes him unblockable. Now, you can see my, my SIG level. It's not really that high. He's not SIG 200 yet. If you watch the video of Summer of Pain Week 7, um, you will see that I took out the the um, uh, the opponent. Um, for some reason, his name just escaped me, but Symbiote Supreme with Hercules for the Cosmic Objective. And I did that with him at level 77 SIG. So I only had seven seconds. And if you haven't seen it, see it. It was more than enough time for me to wreck him. So it's not, you don't fully understand how good this is. You know, if you focus on the fact that it's a buff, it can be nullified, staggered and all of that, you're not really getting the full picture. Okay, that is, and it will go up as your SIG level goes up. I, I don't remember what the uh, max is, but you want it up there. And I will be putting my SIG stones into him and getting him high up there. But it means that you are going to be unblockable and immortal for that long, okay? Now, we're gonna talk a little bit more about um, just how powerful that is when we talk about his uh, immortality, all right? But look at the second sentence here. Immortality is paused during personal special attacks or while landing basic attacks, and it's removed when he's get hit by a special three. So bear that in mind. He's going to be immortal and he's going to be unblockable. And it's paused while he's hitting, landing, not into the block because he's unblockable. So what's going to happen is at the end, when he has this triggered, he's going to just be a machine. It doesn't matter whether they block. It doesn't matter anything. He's going to be able to land a lot of hits. Trust me, you don't get it when you just see it on paper. But when you see it in action, you're just like, wow. Okay, uh, so let's just move on here. So this is what he has always active. Okay, so physical damage. He reduces the potency of incoming bleeds by 50%. Now, remember I said that he was suicide friendly and you saw uh, one of the ways he was suicide friendly, right? Just look at this. So he had a synergy that specifically mentions liquid courage and he has that with himself. So basically it's also always active because he's always there, okay? But he reduces bleed effects by 50%. I run suicides, I run double edge. It puts a bleed debuff on you for, I think it's like 30 seconds or so. So that cuts it down to 50%. But get this, I also have coagulate and I max that out. So I further reduce the damage by another 30%. So I've got 80% damage reduction from that bleed. But I also have willpower. And so what that means is that I'm going to heal from that double edge bleed debuff. So I'm healing. Just like Corvus, I am now healing from having my suicides. But it gets better. Look at the second one. A strong resilience to conventional drugs and toxins reduces the potency of incoming poison effects by 15%. So forget that synergy he has with himself. You also have 15% reduction in the potency of the poison. I do run liquid courage. So now I'm also taking less damage from the poison and I have willpower. So again, I'm healing but it also makes the recovery reduction from poison 20% less effective. Again, healing more. So he is extremely, not just suicide friendly, he actually is better with suicides. Love it. Okay, now let's talk about his feats of strength. That is a big part of his kit. So 
Uh, he has a max of 12 feats of strength, okay? And here are the feats. This is how you gain each feat. You can do, um, you can strike a non-stunned opponent with a heavy attack, any hit of the heavy. He has a two-part heavy. So what you'll often see people do is they will parry and stun, and then they'll hold their heavy until the stun is just about to end, and then they'll fire it off. The first hit may hit them while they're stunned, but then the next hit hits them when they're not stunned. So you get one feat that way, and you can spam that. Uh, the second way you can get a feat is you intercept, okay? Just intercept. That's it. The third, and this is not my favorite one, you stand up after getting knocked down, which means you had to get knocked down. So that means you either got hit with a special or a heavy attack. I'm not trying to do that, all right? So, but any of these three will get you a feat, and you just have to get up to 12 of them to be fully ramped up, okay? Now, if you complete at least one feet, you're going to get this indefinite strength. And you can see what it does there. It increases armor penetration. Remember I mentioned about the armor penetration? It increases armor penetration, uh, and it causes all attacks to deal a burst of physical damage equal to 10% of the damage dealt. So basically, every feet, he's going to hit even harder, up to 12, okay, because they stack. Uh, now, this one was a little bit confusing in practice because I hadn't read this first and I saw it and I didn't understand. So it says the first time each unique feat is completed in a fight, gain one persistent charge. That's a charge that's gonna carry over to the next fight and all the rest of the fights, okay? For the rest of the quest, uh, allowing Hercules to start each fight with strength equal to his persistent charge. So eventually you're gonna be able to ramp up and you'll start fights with the max and you won't have to ramp up at all, okay? That's where you can get him, if the quest is long enough. Now, here's what confused me a little bit. So, I go into the fight, and I built up to 12. And then the next fight, I saw I had one persistent charge. And I was like, why do I have one? I just built up 12. I should have at least, you know, had, had a, a three. And then another time, in another fight, I went on to the next fight, and I had three. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? I had not read carefully his kit. Notice that one word, unique. So what that means is if you're in a fight and you built up to 12 by using the heavy method, you're only going to get one. Okay? Get it? Unique. Um, so in order to go to the next fight with three, you need to do each of those three methods of getting a feat. So in one fight, if you do all three, you'll get three persistent charges for the next one. So you want to use more than one. Now, like I said, third one, I'm not too much of a fan of, but the first two, you should be able to do, okay? That shouldn't be a problem, even if you have to counter their heavy with a heavy. And let me tell you, Hercules has some long legs, okay? His heavy attack be going way across. I love it, okay? Long leg. Um, but anyway, that actually kind of confused me. So hopefully I've clarified that for you guys. All right, let's uh, move on. Whoops. Okay, so uh, for two seconds after completing a feat, Hercules gains uh, attack rating uh, and plus 50% buff duration. We know some things that are buffs, um, <clears throat> like his immortality. Uh, I don't know if that applies to it, but I believe it does. If a special attack is activated during this time, the bonus remains throughout the special attack. So let me explain what you want to do here. All right. Now, you saw that you had three different methods to gain a feat. And if you launch a special attack, you're going to get that extra attack for the entire one. All right. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about intercepting him with a special because it gives you even more. But that is the preferred method for me to make the most of that right there. I intercept with a special. That way, I'm getting the extra buff. I'm getting the extra attack. And the special attack is going to hit harder. So my favorite way to launch specials is with an intercept. One or two. Always intercept. Wait for him to dash. Boom. Hit him with that special. Um, as a side note, 
if you don't have um, Wasp with Ghost and you're playing Ghost, that's kind of what you have to do. You have to bait out their heavies or, you know, wait for them to attack you and intercept with your special as you dash back at the same time to get the full benefit. All right. So it's a very similar technique. And we'll talk more about uh, the other benefit that you get from intercepting with your special. All right. Now, while Hercules has strength, he becomes stun immune. Uh, each stun uh, prevented by this immunity removes one strength. So uh, all he has to do is have a single strength. And remember, we've got persistent charges. So he starts the fight with some strength. And there is also a, um, a synergy where he starts with strength. And I mentioned that that is really good. So if you're fighting a node like uh, Encroaching Stun, just make sure you're completing feats and you're not going to have to worry about Encroaching Stun. Okay, so he's a perfect counter for that. Uh, but it's any time you're stunned. So even if you got parried by someone that has the parry mastery, you won't get stunned, but it will use up one of your strengths. But it's very easy to build up and get those feats. Very easy. Okay. Now, here's one, and it might take a little practice to make the most of this one. Um, but if you are familiar with the backdraft intercept technique, that's where you attack, you don't finish your combo, you dash back and attack right away to get the intercept. Now, the reason that's dangerous is if the AI doesn't follow you, it doesn't attack right afterwards, it'll just wait and then it'll intercept you. So this is actually pretty interesting because it makes that technique even more reliable. All right, so uh, dashing back after landing the first light or medium hit in a combo. So one hit, dash back. It's going to inflict a non-stacking infuriate debuff for seven seconds, making the opponent more aggressive and reducing their offensive ability accuracy by 60%. Okay, and you've got 10 seconds between when you can do this. So when they're more aggressive, they're more likely to follow you so you can get that intercept even easier. So the feats were already pretty easy, but intercept is a very dangerous thing to try and do. This makes it a little bit safer. Okay. Um, well, I guess not safer, I would say, but easier to uh, pull off. Uh, while fighting as a defender, the duration of the infuriate is increased by uh, to 10 seconds, and it is triggered whenever Hercules dashes back. So uh, on defense, it's just going to be annoying because it's going to reduce your offensive ability accuracy. It's not going to make you any more aggressive, but it does reduce your ability accuracy. That's huge. Okay, that is huge. All right, now let's get to his special attacks. And remember what I said about intercepting with the specials uh, and the benefits you get. All right, so his special one, he's going to gain a true sense buff. Okay, so he won't be able to miss and he won't get auto-blocked for 16 seconds. The first hit grants a precision buff, increasing critical rating, okay, for 25 seconds. That's a long time. If this attack was used to intercept, he's gonna get plus two additional precision buffs. So he's gonna crit like crazy for 25 seconds, okay? That is huge, all right? Um, so in addition, uh, let's take a look again. Okay, so you can intercept and you're going to get a feat of strength. Okay, and you see here the two seconds after completing a feat, you're going to gain attack and buff duration. And then if you intercept with your special here, not only does it get all the attack and everything, but it also gets this. He gains critical rating and gets three for just intercepting. That means this is how you want to fire your special attacks, if at all possible. Now, there might be some cases like you're almost down uh, to the end and, and he's almost dead. You might not bother with it. But if you have the time, intercept with your specials. Uh, special two, the potency of burst damage dealt via strength. Remember that burst damage that you get uh, when you complete a, a feat and you gain a strength? Uh, during this attack is increased by 50% for each armor up on the opponent, okay, um, 
fight against uh, uh, Colossus, nasty, uh, up to a maximum increase of 200%. The first hit grants a cruelty buff. Instead of the precision buffs that we got um, earlier, this one is a cruelty buff, which is going to increase the critical damage, okay, for 15 seconds. And if it was, uh, you know, used as an intercept to intercept, you're going to get two additional cruelty. So same thing as special one, intercept. So you get the most benefit from intercepting with your special attacks, okay? And then finally, the special attack three, you're going to gain an indestructible buff for four seconds, which will prevent all damage. Now, that can be right, quite useful, okay? Because um, I believe it will remove some debuffs, all right? And also, if the opponent is at a special three and you are about to hit your special three, keep going, hit a special three, boom. And if the opponent fires their special three in four seconds, you can tank it just fine, okay? So that's useful. Now, keep in mind that it's an indestructible buff, but you do have ways to increase uh, buff duration. Um, but after this attack, if the opponent has three bars of power, Hercules gains a power gain buff, granting 100% of a bar of power over three seconds. So that's three seconds. So if you are quick, let me just explain. You have indestructible for four seconds. If they're at their special three and you did it the way that I mentioned, you're going to gain 100% of a bar of power in three seconds. And you probably are going to parry and you're going to be hitting your opponent. So you're going to be gaining that bar of power even faster. Okay. So now you have a bar of power. What do you want to do with it? Well, look at that. You can fire off your special one in an intercept and just keep going to town. All right. So there's, there's several ways to play him. I am not the expert at playing him. I still have to practice. Uh, but right now, he is my favorite cosmic champion in the game. Move over, Corvus. Corvus is still up there. Both of them are still in my top uh, five as far as favorites go. You know, you've got Cosmic Ghost Rider. you got Hyperion. You know, um, but he is up there. He is definitely... Number one, I would say Corvus is number two. And then the rest of them are fighting it out for uh, uh, three or so. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I'm not going to add a lot more gameplay because this video is already longer than I had planned it to be. All right, so take care. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. If you found it informative, leave a comment. I will be making other videos uh, where we will showcase uh, Hercules in the wild, so to speak. All right, so take care, and you all have a blessed day.